Hi, it's Bumble. Welcome back to my channel. This feels weird. This is the first time I'm using the, um, the VTuber model for another video. I feel slightly self-conscious, just because normally with these, I'm able to, like, lean back comfortably in the chair, like, all the way back, and just stare at the wall while I talk. But because I need the camera to see me, I have to just sit upright for the next, like, half an hour. I'm just, I gotta just pretend the camera isn't there. It's gonna just kill- I feel self-conscious, like, there's no one here, but the camera's here. And I know it's being recorded, and my brain's just like, ugh, no. So I'm just gonna try looking at the screen. Okay, so I watched this musical called Barnum, which is based on the life of P.T. Barnum. They made a movie about him already called The Greatest Showman. Um, but honestly, they're both musicals, but I think Barnum's easily better. Or, okay, I shouldn't say easily, because the other one's really fucking popular, but, you know, I prefer this one. Um, okay, the way I even found out about this, I've been on, like, musical theater rabbit hole for the past, like, week, as I tend to do. I mean, I'm a musical theater fan. Is that the right word? Musical theater fan? Musical fan? Whatever. I'm a fan of musicals. I've been for a long time. Um, I must want to say since I was a kid, but that's technically not right. Anyway, I don't know how I ended up getting back into uh, Phantom of the Opera, but I did. I was... Oh wait, no. I was making a playlist, and I was like, oh yeah, I could make one for musicals and whatever. And I'd watched... Okay, I made this video a while ago, like last week or something, where you guys probably didn't watch it, doesn't matter. Um, there was this movie based on the Phantom of the Opera, but not the musical, but like the original book from like 1990. I loved it. It was great. Um, it's on YouTube for free, by the way, if you guys want to watch it. Anyway, um, I watched that, and then I was like, oh, I'm kind of interested in it again. I started listening to songs from it, or from the musical, and then I was putting those on my Spotify playlist, because I just make... Spotify playlist for everything now, apparently. Um, I have like 31 <laughs> playlists on there. Some of them are super short, and then there's some that are like 10 hours long. Anyway, uh, yeah, so I was listening to Phantom of the Opera stuff, and, you know, Spotify will be like, oh, you're listening to this thing? We're gonna automatically, you know, instead of, once you've run out of songs, we'll put more songs of like similar things and whatever. And it was songs from the original musical, and I was like, oh shit, I forgot that existed, because the original musical started in like the 80s or something, I think like, late 80s, I believe, anyway, um, and then, what happened, what happened, um, I watched it, and I was looking at the names for the cast and stuff, and I recognized that the dude that plays the Phantom in that for like the original musical. His name is... I should know. I've been listening to a lot of his music lately. Um, what is it? Michael Crawford, yeah. Because, you know, I was listening to the musical soundtrack, whatever, started listening to... You know, it's like, I find a musician I like, or like a band, and I have to listen to like everything that they've done that I recognize, so I did. Anyway, um, then I ended up watching Hello Dolly, because he's also in that, because you probably heard his voice before, um, if you've seen the movie Wally, you know, the footage that it has that's from a musical, and even the beginning of Wally, like, you know, that's iconic shot, it shows the earth, and it has the song, um, put on your Sunday clothes, yeah, that's him, in both the scene and the singing, anyway. So then I ended up watching Hello Dolly. I've already seen it before. It's like a comfort movie for me. But it's also almost three hours long, so eh, watch it, but only if you have time. It's great, though. Anyway, uh, I'd listen to a lot of his music on Spotify. Just put on Barnum, which he's also in. And I was like, I've never heard of this. I'll check it out. It's on YouTube for free, and it's on there legally, too. I gotta emphasize that, because there was, I guess, a recording of, like, of, like, the original London cast. Like, not music-wise, but, like, the whole show. 
that was like put on TV or something. So that's what I watched. That was really cool. Um, eh, because the cameras were able to go on the people's faces and make close-ups. Because usually with like slime tutorials, it's like from really far away and it's usually a shitty quality. Um, you know, that's the price you pay for piracy. Uh, but here you can like see their faces and all the expressions. And that's really cool because like when I've gone to like see a musical in person, I'm us I usually have to be far away just because, you know, that's the cheaper seats. Um, and you can't really see their faces. And it's like, yes, you can hear the emotion in their voice. But, you know, facial expressions are so important. And they're like the other half in communication with like body language. So, you know, if you miss half of that, you're not really feeling it, you know? Um, so it was cool getting to see that. Though I also hated that the cameras were like constantly cutting between stuff. That it was really annoying and kind of made me feel out of focus that I was watching a musical. Because it was like on stage and everything in front of an audience. You know, like how you'd go see a musical. It wasn't like a, it didn't feel like it was on TV kind of vibe. But, you know, because I mean at the end of the day it's recording the musical. Okay, anyway, I watched it. Um, I'm going to talk about it. Uh, so the plot of this, because it's one of those that's like, it goes from like a certain year to ending in a certain year story-wise, mm -hmm. you know, Barnum, I mean his name's P.T. Barnum, I'll just keep calling him Barnum, it starts with him, and he has, hold on, I'm just reading a Wikipedia, I kind of zoned out for parts of this, like I was kind of confused with the plot was at the beginning, but like, his whole thing is that, he likes to, so I'm almost going to say prank people, no, um, bamboozle, he's a con man basically, he loves doing it, it's like his whole thing, and he does that with like, these exhibits and stuff, he refers to it as a humbug, like humbugging people, it's weird, but that's like a key phrase in this musical, so it's like, it's him, and then he has his wife, her name's Charity, he, she doesn't like all his little shenanigans, but, you know, they're like deeply in love or whatever. Oh, that's the other thing too. A trope that I like is when there's a couple and one of them is like so in love with their partner. It's like the most adorable thing ever. And I've noticed with all of like the characters I've seen with um, Michael Crawford played in these musicals, it's always like he's so in love. His character's always just so in love with this person. And it's usually fine, except for, like, Phantom of the Opera, where, you know, he's the villain because of it. But, no, seeing, like, Barnum, the character, is so just in fucking love with his wife is adorable in this. Like, there's this one scene, uh, towards the beginning, she's standing, um, like, high up on something or whatever. And he gets so excited to see her. Dude literally, like, runs across the stage, climbs up some, like, thing like a freaking spider monkey, it's so fast, and then kind of holds himself up on like this balcony thing to kiss her, and then like climbs back down. Okay, that's another thing I have to like mention about this musical. You're not only seeing a musical, you're seeing basically a circus performance, and I do not mean that in a negative way, I mean like a literal circus, because I don't know if the like performers and background dancers are like actual trained members of the circus, I don't know what you would call that, um, but they seem like it with all the crazy stuff that they do in the background, and even, like, Barnum as the character does all this, like, circus stuff too, like, all of these, um, acrobatic stuff, it's crazy, like, he'll be singing about something he'll do like a little flip or whatever, he's like running around, climbing on things, and this is all while like, the characters are still singing too, like not every character does this, it's mostly him, but it's so cool, like I think the thing that impressed me most was there was this part, he was singing this song, and it's like one of those songs, I guess you gotta really put all the effort into singing it, you can, and at the same time, I'm not kidding, he's literally on a, um, What's it called? A trapeze? When you're like, no, no, not trapeze. He's on a freaking tightrope. There's no net below. He's not like stupidly high or anything. But, you know, he's like pretty high up decently. 
and he's just going at it, singing this musical number, and at the same time just, like, going around on the tightrope. I mean, he doesn't make it look super easy or anything. He's, like, looking down every once in a while and, like, taking his time, you know, don't want him to fall off. But, oh, man, that was so cool. Because I noticed with, like, big musical numbers and stuff, where it's, like, a really emotional song, or they gotta, you know, really put their voice into it and everything. It's like, you know, they're usually not dancing or anything. They're focusing on the song. But not dudes singing an absolute banger. I wish I remembered which song it was. Well, just going around on a tightrope. And he doesn't fall off or, like, stumble or anything. It's so cool. Or he does, like, little other tricks and stuff, too. Sometimes they don't work. And it's kind of funny. And he'll make a joke about it to the audience. And... With the tricks not working or him talking to the audience, I genuinely couldn't tell sometimes if it was something staged or it's part of, like, the musical plot or whatever. It's so weird, because it would fit with in the character, because, dude, you know, runs a circus, he's supposed to entertain people, so it makes sense for the character, but I was also like, hmm, this is an actual thing. Like, the two examples of that, I noticed, um... Was there's this trick he had to do where he had a hat and he's singing this line about like fire and what was supposed to happen I guess is he pulls like something out of the hat and it's like a piece of paper or something on fire but it took him like two or three tries to get it right and it's weird it's like he sings the line and does the motion with the hat but you know there's nothing in his hand like there's no fire or anything and he turns to one of the cameras and says something about it he like makes a face or whatever and then keeps trying, and then it lights, and he's just kind of like, whoa, and then, I guess, tries to put it out, and then runs off, but then it cuts to the actress playing charity, and she has, she's, like, covering her mouth and looks really surprised, like, you know, like, that wasn't supposed to happen, or there was this other thing where they're singing a song on a swing, and she's on the swing, he's pushing her, and she jumps off the swing, and then he jumps on the swing, but I guess he jumps so fast. What's a nice way of putting this? I can't think of anything. Dude, like, hits his balls on the swing or something. And then, like, a few, like, a minute later, it has to sing the next part in the song, but it's really high-pitched. And I didn't know if that was, like, part of the song or part of the joke or not. So, like, little things like that would happen. And that's the cool thing of watching it being, like, recorded on TV. I don't know if it was even, like, the first, um, performance of the musical, or if they'd done it before, but that just the fact that so many things went wrong, and he'd make jokes about it directly to the camera, was really funny. But there was times where I could tell it was, like, a little stage, too, because, like, you know, he tried, a whole plot point is he tries to humbug his wife, and she's just like, I'm not having any of your bullshit. And he'd say something to the camera about it. Of like, womanly tricks or whatever. And it's just, I don't know, it's goofy. Dude's clearly having fun playing this character. And that makes it more entertaining for the audience. The audience had fun too, from what I could tell. Like, there's a number at the end where the characters are trying to get Barnum to like, join a circus or something. And the audience is, like, clapping along and everything. It's so cool. Okay, um, I should probably talk about the plot before we talk about the songs. Okay, so like I said, Barnum, main character, is married to his wife, Charity. They love each other. He's known for his shenanigans, and she doesn't like it, but whatever. Um, and he's trying to, like, do something at a tent, like at a booth thing, by telling people about, uh, the, quote-unquote, the oldest woman alive. And he has her sing this song. I mean, I'll mostly talk in detail about the songs I like, but it's like this number. Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. I gotta, I should just talk about the numbers as I'm doing the plot. Okay. Restart this. I'm sorry. It's going to be so long. Also, I recorded a video right before this. That's why my voice is dead. Um, okay, so it starts with him in front of a tent for the musical. He sings this song called There's a Sucker Born Every Minute. I actually listened to all of these songs on Spotify for the most part um, while I was doing homework before I set up the VTuber thing. 
I took notes for like what they're kind of like. It's like a song about him being a con man, basically, but he's saying how there's a sucker born every minute and he can like trick anyone. It's like in ragtime, which is like. And then I just got back to the piano. It's. I don't know. It's in ragtime. That's the genre. Anyway, um. <laughs> Sometimes I wish I write scripts. I, I'm worried that sometimes I talk and I sound like stupider than I intend to, and I just, I don't know. My mouth goes faster than my brain, honestly. So he sings a song, um, and then he introduces to the audience and to like people walking past him in the on the stage, the quote unquote oldest woman alive. Oh, did I just block the camera? I didn't. I'm not looking at OBS, but um. I just moved my paper with my notes, um, and she sings this song called Think I'm Old, Thank God I'm Old, that's what it's called, um, and at first no one's paying attention, and then he tells her, hey, uh, what if you lie and you say that you raised George Washington or something, and that gets people interested, so you know, he has to do a bit of his, like, quote-unquote humbug. I'm gonna just call them shenanigans. I think the word humbug's weird. He does this shenanigans bullshit, um, and people start paying attention, and then his wife, uh, oh yeah, there's a song called Charity, I don't remember, uh, that she sings. Um, she wants him to work at a factory, and he sings this song, this really cool song called The Colors of My Life. It's, um, like a kind of folksy sounding song, you could basically like waltz to it pretty much, but it isn't eh, sort of like a waltz. Um, and it's the song about how the world's... Wait, wait, no, hold on. Let me look at this for a second. Um, he needs things to be colorful and life to be interesting, basically. <laughs> And it's sort of like a two-part song, in a sense. And he sings about how he wants his life to be interesting and whatever. And she sings the song as well. It's like a part one and a part two thing. And it's basically like an argument. But vocally, they don't sound like they're mad at each other. It's just them disagreeing, so not really an argument. Um, anyway, he wants to build this museum. And he gets some clowns. I mean literal clowns, um, I gotta just keep clar clarifying, this is a circus theme thing, I'm not trying to, yeah, um, so I try and build a museum, and he's kind of discouraged, and then she sings this song called One Brick at a Time, which I didn't take notes for, but it is a good song, um, and just wants him to keep trying to build it, and they sing a song called The Museum Song which is about all the thing in the museums, which is like these exhibits he has. And I forgot that the museum burns down, <laughs> actually. So then there's no more museum, but that's okay because he finds some... Wikipedia calls them attractions, but that doesn't sound very nice. He finds people to like join his act, basically. One of them's Tom Thumb, who isn't like a major character at all, but he gets a musical number called Bigger Isn't Better. And it's pretty cool. I didn't take notes on that either, but it's good. Um, and then an elephant called Jumbo the Elephant that I forgot about. I don't know how I forgot about the giant elephant puppet, but yeah. Okay, but then um, he's trying to find more acts. Yeah, that's the right word. He's trying to find more acts. He doesn't have the circus yet. He's just trying to find more... He's trying to build up to something, basically, since the museum's gone. He's got, like, nothing right now. He's just trying to find people to join him. And that's where he meets the singer, Jenny Lynn. She's also a character in uh, The Greatest Showman. And the thing that happens with both of those is that he meets her, tries to get her to come to sing in the U.S., and then he cheats on his wife with her. Um, funny thing is, I read about Barnum... Not the character of the musical, but the actual guy. Well, no, I was reading about Jenny Lind, actually. I was curious, because she's like a Swedish opera singer. In real life, they didn't actually have any romantic stuff. 
like he did help her, you know, like to perform in the U.S., but there was like no romance stuff between them at all. But both Barnum the Musical and The Greatest Showman both have like this huge plot point that takes so much of the runtime of them having this romance, which creates drama. I was almost mad about it in this. On one hand, with the costume, and I don't know the actress who plays her, she was very pretty in this. Like, when they, when her and um, Barnum meet each other in, in this musical, I mean, it's like, he's telling her about, like, oh yeah, welcome to America, and then he, she turns around and he sees her face for the first time, and he's just kind of like, whoa, and you could tell this dude's immediately interested in her, and I was kind of like, whoa, but she's super pretty, she has this really cute, very elegant costume, it's like this white dress, she has this parasol, it's kind of an old-fashioned kind of reminds me of some of the costumes in, um, Hello Dolly. But very pretty, um, and then he goes on tour with her, and he gets to sing this song. It's my favorite song in this, um, it's called Out There. It's weird because it's this song about how the circus is really cool, and he can't be a normal person. He wants to be excited about things. He doesn't want to be boring. He wants to experience all life has to offer, basically. I thought it was towards the end, but no, it's when he's going on tour, I guess. Um, she also flirts with him a little bit, too. I forgot about that. Like, there's a scene where she, like, has to go to some party, and he's like, pick anyone you want to be your date, and she's like, you, you're gonna go with me, and you can tell he's like conflicted at first, you know, because his wife is just like, oh, come along, she doesn't assume anything, she's just like, yeah, let's go, because, you know, they're married and whatever, and then he lies to her, and goes on tour with Jenny Lynn, and that sort of starts the second act, which is this, it starts with this song called Come Follow the Band, because there's a marching band. And that one's pretty cool, I didn't write it down. Um, yeah, I don't have it in my playlist. Um, what was I gonna say? Wait, did they not have? Oh, I'm sorry, I skipped a song. When he meets her, he gets to see her perform, because I guess in this, I don't remember how it is in um, The Greatest Showman, but in this musical, she doesn't speak English, she only speaks Swedish, he speaks English, but like when she sings, because she does actually get a song to sing, which is great, because most of the songs in this are sung by Barnum, by the way, which, no complaints from me, that's why I'm here. Um, she sings this song called Love Makes Fools of Us All, and that's got to probably be in my top three of songs in this easily. It's, um, actually, it's an opera song, there's like a little bit of English in it, but it's basically just, you know, a love song. She dedicates it to him, which is like, maybe she's interested in him too. But it's really pretty. It doesn't feel like something that would be in a musical, because, you know, it's opera, but, I mean, the vibes still fit. It just, it stands out, that one, and this other song called, um, Black and White, which I'll talk about later, it's like a jazz song. Those two really stood out to me out of everything because every other song is like either a march or very upbeat or has like circusy instruments or whatever and then there's these two which are like completely different genres. But I mean it does take place in the 1900s so it like, um, you know, it fits with the plot. It makes sense with the time period I mean. Anyway, um, so yeah, she sings that, he joins her on tour, he leaves his wife behind, and it just, it killed me knowing that he left his wife behind, because with, through like everything else in the musical, he's like so in love with his wife, and she does care, but she, she loves him too, but like he loves her more, and then all of a sudden he meets this beautiful opera singer, and he just ditches his wife, um, I mean he does end up going back to her though, which is cool, that's the thing, um, like, they're going on the tour, everything's going great, and then he realizes, oh, I miss my wife. So he leaves Jenny, and she isn't really in the story anymore. Um, but, you know, they, they ended as friends or whatever. 
and he goes back to his wife, um, and then, you know, now that he's had his fun and whatever, she's like, hey, you know, we went on this tour, you didn't really accomplish anything though, so we're gonna try things my way, which, because there's no circus at this point, all he did was he built a museum, and he, you know, went on this tour, there's no circus or anything like that for him, nothing's going on for him right now, so she's like, we're gonna just live a normal life, you're gonna get a normal job, and I think visually that's interesting with how they show this, because he's like, okay, fine, I'll do that, and they have this song called Black and White, because that's the thing, everything in this, of course, is, like, super colorful, I mean, it's a circus-themed musical, for Pete's sake, but then here, the design for, like, the sets and the costumes literally becomes black and white. Not in, like, the sense of an old cartoon, but just, you know, black, white, and gray. It's all to represent how, like, you know, his life's normal, but, like, boring for him now. All the color's literally gone. Uh, so, yeah, then we get the song called Black and White, and it's this jazzy, like, 1920-sounding song with this female singer who isn't a character. I don't know who she is, but she's there. She's great. Um... And she doesn't show up again either, which makes me a little sad. Uh, it kind of feels like something that would be in line, like, the musical Cabaret. Which doesn't really take place in the 20s, it takes place in the 30s. It's like the end of the jazz age. So it fits more into, like, Cabaret or, um, definitely, like, Chicago, for example, for sure. Anyway, um... So he's living a normal life, he tries having this cloak factory, which has some, like, cool choreography, because it's part of the black, black and white song, but it fails. I forgot that he tried to build his own city, and that failed too, so then he decides, okay, I'm going to become a politician, um, but no one's really interested in his, his campaign. Um... And then because of that, she realizes, like, oh, I made a mistake of having him be normal and all the life, the color in his life is gone, um, in a sense. <laughs> you know, like, he's, he's this very extroverted entertainer character, you know? And she's like, okay, fine, your campaign's failing, you can have color in your life again. And it's so funny when that happens. It's not even during a musical number or anything. She's like, okay, fine. And then, I, oh my god, how do I even describe what happens next? Confetti rains down onto the stage and, like, all the circus people show up. And it gets super noisy. And they literally pull out this colorful banner. And I forgot what it said on it. But it's just, oh, it works so well. As in, like, all the color in his life suddenly springs back, and they have to show it visually. It's just funny. Anyway, um, so because of that, and because he's fun again, he gets to become mayor. And they sing a reprise of the song, The Colors of My Life, because they realize, like, hey, we have different viewpoints. One of us wants to have fun, and the other one wants to live a normal life. And, you know, they respect each other in that, and it's very sweet, um, because it is, like, basically like a love song, pretty much, um, and it's so nice, and they're happy, and he's mayor, and everything's going great, and he's even planning on running a senator, um, and she dies, <laughs> just out of nowhere, they don't even explain what she dies from. The scene fits really sad, too, I didn't even realize she died at first. Like, it starts with them, you know, they sing the colors of my life and whatever, and they sit down on, like, the steps to some building, and they're chatting, and it's great. And then she gets up and walks up the stairs, but the spotlight is, like, empty, and you're like, what? And then he starts crying, and I don't mean, like, fake movie crying. He, like, actually starts crying, like, snot and everything. It's, like, really ugly crying. I kind of giggled at it. I felt a little bit bad, but, um, I was not expecting that, honestly. Like, I've seen people cry in musicals before, but I'm not used to, like, being able to see their faces. So it's just like, whoa. 
genuinely made me feel sad in the scene because of that. Watching that scene and just his crying, I was like, oh, poor guy. He sounds so heartbroken that his wife's gone. Um, anyway, he ends up not being able to become senator because his political party screws him over. Um, and then he thinks about it and he's like, you know what, shenanigans are all I'm really good at. And he sings a song called Prince of Humbug. Um, what are my notes on Prince of Humbug? It feels like it would be something that would be in Mary Poppins. Is like, instrumentally, the way I could describe it. Um, it's more of him, like, listing things. He's, like, listing all these synonyms for humbugs and whatever, and how he's a con man. He doesn't call himself a con man. I mean, he's not cheating people out of anything. It's more like he's just lying to them. Exaggerating the truth, if you will. It's kind of more of a speaking than singing kind of song, but he is singing, for sure, which is great. Um, and then Bailey, you know, because the silk is fun, and then Bailey. So Bailey's a character, too. He shows up out of nowhere. Oh, and at this point, like, a ton of time has passed as well, like, in the plot. I don't remember what year it is by the end, but he's, like, much older now. Um, and then Bailey shows up and is like, hey, I'm gonna start a circus, you should be my partner in that. And it's so funny when that happens, because they have a musical number called Join the Circus. And it's a circus march, um, and I know I said that out there was also a circus march, but this one's like really more circusy. Like they have multiple singers. They kind of sing a bit aggressively in this too. Like they're almost wanting to threaten his life to join. Is vocally what it sounds like. It's not like a villain song though. But um, <laughs> the choreography for it is so weird because they're like surrounding him in a circle and then they literally pick him up and carry him away but what the actor does like there's this one part where he's standing on something and he leans forward really far almost going flat but without like falling off or stumbling and he just keeps do doing shit like this and like anytime he does like an acrobatic thing i just kept getting anxiety i'm like dude don't don't hurt yourself or anything Especially because the actor at the time, I think was like in his late 40s or something, because I was wondering, I'm like, how are you doing all this circus stuff so well? I mean, I did read about, you know, his experience with the musical on the Wikipedia page, and it was like, oh yeah, having all this circus training and stuff to like prep for this, because you can imagine you need the training, but the fact that he, I mean, I'm sure it's difficult, for sure. He makes it look easy. Or just kind of just does all of it very quickly, and it's just like, whoa. Like, that, out of anything, was, like, the most impressive thing to me with this musical. It was just, like, acrobatics, and you got circus stuff. It really does feel like you're at a circus performance watching this musical. Um, but I mean, the main focus of it, of course, is the singing and the, and the plot. Anyway, they sing this number, and he's like, fine, I'll join. Oh, another thing, too, um... An important plot thing is that Charity, at the beginning of the musical, she has this two-headed coin, and when her and Barnum are trying to decide stuff, um, she flips the coin, and usually she picks head for thing, heads for things, but because both sides are heads, you know, she gets what she wants, basically. Anyway, before she dies, uh, she reveals to him about the secret of the coin, because he's like, how do you keep winning all these arguments? He gets a little pissy, it's kind of, not pissy, but like, kind of bothered by it. He's like, you've been cheating with all this stuff, but, you know, he gives, she gives him the coin before he dies, so, you know, with this decision to join the circus, he's like, okay, I'll flip this coin, um, and, you know, he ends up joining, and they form the circus, Barnum and Bailey. Anyway, then we get a song, oh no, I didn't write the name of the last song, but it's pretty good. And it made me sad a little that it sounded differently than how it did on Spotify. I mean, I'm assuming Spotify is like the professionally recorded recording, and then with the musical and then you're watching it live. But in that, in the musical, with the last song, the starting notes of it, he sings it so gently, and then it sounds louder on Spotify, and I'm like, man, could have put this in my Goodnight Bumble playlist. No, I can't. Um, 
Oh, I did put most of these songs um, on my Spotify playlist. The, the music for this musical is very good. It's on Spotify. You know what I'm going to say. Go listen to it. Anyway, you know, they have, he sings this song. Oh, it's called The Final Event. There's a sucker. It's a reprise of There's a Sucker Born Every Minute. And at that point, he's literally sitting on a stool talking directly to the audience. And then the last lines are about how, like, all the stuff in the beginning of the musical, like the museum and Tom Thumb and all of that's gone. He's older now, and he says how his humbugs disappeared. Like, all the stuff's gone, and I mean, now he's running the circus, there's no use for his humbug. Pity. And now I'm just, the last line of this is literally pity. Um, but yeah, that's the whole musical. I was not expecting it to be this good. Like, at first I thought, when I saw it was like a television thing, I thought, oh, it's going to be like a made-for-television. I thought it's going to be almost like a made-for-television movie and not a real musical. But no, it's like a musical recording that's on TV. I've watched another thing where it was in that format. It was a musical called Sunday in the Park with George, which is also really good. I haven't reviewed it. I don't know if I will, but... It's a Sondheim musical. It's it's got some good numbers. Made me feel kind of depressed. Um, this one is actually not a depressing musical. It's very upbeat and cheery. It, I mean, the saddest thing in this is that his wife dies. But like other than that, it's pretty good. I mean, it's pretty upbeat, um, which I needed. It's just weird because you know, I watched The Phantom of the Opera, which like was made after the recording of Barnum that I watched where it's like, you know, the main actor is playing this depressing man who lives in a sewer who's the villain and it's very, like, a gothic and melancholy musical and then I go to Barnum where he's now playing a character that's a circus um, a future circus owner and you know, it's like a circus in the background, and there's so much color. It's literally, this is like the exact opposite, not exact, but you know, vibe, music-wise, a Phantom of the Opera, and just having that contrast back-to-back -back was funny for me. Um, but anyway, now, I mean, I'm still on a musical rabbit hole. Um, I'm, I already did talk about Phantom of the Opera, the musical. I do want to do a, um, the movie is different, but it's also good. The, the 2004 movie based on the musical, I want to do a review of that, but I want to watch it in October. Um, I watched the musical, and now I kind of want to watch it again, though, it's so, for Phantom, it's so fucking good. Um, ah, but the visual recording was shit, so, like, Thing. Um, can't really do a proper review, um, but it's so good. Anyway, yeah, I've been watching, point of this, I've been watching all these musicals with, uh, Michael Crawford, and I found out he does movies as well besides Hello, Dolly. Anyway, that ended up me going on Wikipedia, where I do the thing where I'm like, okay, I liked this actor and this specific performance, I now have to watch, like, every other thing that they've been in, I made a whole list, and the first thing is just a war comedy movie that also has John Lennon in it, so I'm gonna watch that, I'm gonna watch all this stuff, I'm not gonna do a review and all this stuff, but I'm gonna watch as much of it on my free time if I can, if any of it's good I'll do a review probably, okay yeah, that's fine in the musical. It was better than I thought it was going to be. It had a lot of really good songs. And it's professionally recorded, and that's uploaded on YouTube, so... You, you literally have no excuse in such good condition. Um, I've never even been to a circus in real life, so this is kind of interesting for me to watch as well. But yeah, it's good. That's my review. Hopefully I end up watching this. And yeah, that's it. Bye.